What's up, Meta-Nerds? This video is all about the Y45 Armored Transport Hauler, also known as the AT Hauler. It was manufactured by Kuat Driveyards, the same people that built the walkers that it was carrying, though the larger AT-AT barge and Y85 Titan dropships were built by Incom Corporation. At a height of 18.9 meters, or 62 feet, it was about two Wookiees shorter than the at, -AT and at a width of 14 meters, or 46 feet, it was three Ewoks thinner than an LAAT gunship. While at a length of 11.2 meters, or 37 feet, it was a Jawa shorter than the X-Wing. At a top atmospheric speed of 125 kilometers per hour, or 77 miles per hour, it was only one-fifth the speed of the Gazanti class cruiser, and one-tenth the speed of a TIE fighter, making it slower than a smart car from Earth. This speed was achieved via its six small ion engines, and it was equipped with a hyperdrive, though its Navic computer could only take it to pre-programmed Imperial bases in order to prevent thieves from making cargo disappear. Of course, some people could try and override this, or just use it to raid other Imperial bases. These heavy-duty cargo arms had magnetic clamps that could lock onto cargo containers, while it also contained steel ton cables that would conduct localized traction fields, a technology that works like the opposite of a repulsor lift, and which gave it enough strength to carry a pair of 2M hover tanks, and one of the Empire's many walker options. It also contained banks of repulsor lifts that could manipulate cargo and vehicles before locking it into place, while also having a hard point for attaching sensors, and even weapons like remote-fired missile launchers. This was especially important since the AT hauler was used to shuttle walkers and tanks to the front line, something that was only tenable due to the thick plate armor that covers this ship. This service gantry allowed for adjustments of cargo while in flight, and for especially long trips, the hauler even had a shower and bunks for the two-man crew. The folding up of these arms is something that the Empire required in order to save space in hangar bays, something that Sinar fleet systems worked into the folding wings of the Lambda and Delta-class shuttles. By the year 10 BBY, most of these had been phased out for other transports, but their ruggedness made them ideal in harsh environments and war-torn worlds. The only downside of this ship was of course its speed, and like all craft that create strong magnetic fields via ion thrusters or repulsor fields, it was unable to pass through shields, though it could just drop off the walkers right outside of the shield, and these non-hover units could just stomp their way forward. Years later, the Alliance to Restore the Republic would acquire several Y-45s, where they had this ship modified to accommodate for the T-4B, AAC-1 speeder tank, and even some armored assault tanks that were left over from the time of the Clone Wars. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. In the book, The Art of Solo, A Star Wars Story, we can see that the art team generated a ton of different ships to fit this role in the movie. And in some of these pictures, we see what looks a lot like a Gazanti, while others go for a more TIE fighter paneled look. And quotes in this book say that they were inspired by Tron, though they wanted to keep a simplistic Imperial look that would provide an area for an Indiana Jones style fisticuffs outside of the ship action scene. And we can even see early models of the cockpit, along with a diagram for how this ship would work. Other art shows it dropping ATSTs on Mimban, perhaps before the ATDT design was finalized. So that's it for the Y45 Armored Transport Hauler, also known as the AT Hauler. But most important of all, remember, criminals will always find ways to steal your cargo, and the Force will be with you. Always.